yz axis, xy axis. And with the various different settings up here, you can just drag and drop elements or add new elements manually. And it takes a great deal of time out of uh, actually editing in numbers because of course if you was to put them all in long hand um, it would take a lot longer than it would to to, to drag and drop using the uh, toolbars at the top here drag and drop those elements and then go into the uh, numerical editor and change them to the sizes and positions that you wanted them to be that's assuming that you were going from say a five element to say a ten element for example so next we'll go down to the the NEC um, editor, the new as it uh, says in brackets there. And this is my favorite and what gives us a lot of uh, control over the antenna itself. Um, each of these lines represents one of the elements or the wires as they're called in the antenna itself. Now on here um, you see that there are five elements in the antenna. There's the loop a reflector and three directors yet there's eight wires that are listed in here this is because the first one here is the reflector at the back the next four are the four sides of this driven loop so one two three four and then you have the three directors now there's the, the segmentation density which we've discussed uh, in the easy NEC uh, tutorials which uh, these are uh, uh, voltage and current um, segments the each element is um, cut or split into segments um, and that's the it's the measurement between each of those sections that are compared that help build up the model so changing the number of segments in each of these elements would vary slightly uh, the results that are seen the reason that they're all different is it is quite important for those segments in each of the elements and each of the wires to be as close to one another in physical size as possible. So obviously on a reflector, which is a, a very long element, you're going to need more segments than you would do in the final director, which would be a lot smaller. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why these vary in sizes. The loop, for instance, because it's a full size loop and it has these side pieces, it's smaller than the next or the first of the, uh, the directors, which is why these on these sides that only has 11, where the next two directors have 12 segments, as an example. As we had discussed before, the elements, you see this green wire here with the X mark, that's the center of the elements and the sizes of the elements are measured by the distance from here out to that edge of that element and from here again out to this edge of this element. So you can see here on the Y axis, Y1, it says it's minus 1.483 meters on that's from there to there and then plus 1.483 meters out to there. So it's the sum of those two which is the overall length of that element. Uh, Z is the height of the antenna and in this particular case it's, it's in free space so it's, there's no height above anything at the moment. Now the radius looks a little bit more complicated but because of it's a, it's a, a radius number um, this is effectively half of the diameter of the element. So these elements are 3 8 inches um, in diameter in metric that's 9.525 millimeters so of course half of 9.525 is around the 4.76 mark uh, the driven loop has 3 8 inch at the ends and it's half inch on these main sections here so that's where your 6.35 which is equal to a quarter inch uh, comes in and then back up to the 4.7 six uh, mark for the loop ends. Now in here there are a number of other tabs that we can see. I'll go back to the symbols in a moment. Firstly is the source which we won't go into too much at the moment. Uh, the, the, the source is the feed point uh, and why that's set up as that is. We'll keep that for a later time. And then as you can see down here on the wire conductors it's uh, established in here in this section 
what the material is, what, what those elements or what those wires are made out of. And you can see that each one of those is made out of T6 aluminium. So there will be a variance in the result as a, uh, from what is selected in here. If it was copper, it might change slightly. If it was stainless steel, it would change slightly. More so as you go up in frequency, the changes to the materials. Uh, but that's uh, what that does um, there. And this needs to be set correctly. If that's set to zero and there's no material loss involved, then uh, the results will be wrong. The next one in here is the, the frequency um, that uh, uh, the the center frequency of the antenna or whether you're going to, to have it sweeping a set of frequencies. Um, and then we have the used kernel, which is part of the easy NEC code and any comments that you might have on that, uh, that antenna. Now, the reason I wanted to come back to the uh, symbols a little later on is I just wanted to cover off something else with you and look at the, the 3D plot in order to uh, see that. At the moment, we're in free space. Uh, and this is a, a, a free space example of the antenna. Um, if we were to run in um, the full mode, a, a plot, uh, and then go to the 3D model. We can put a colored pattern on there and see how the antenna looks uh, and what the uh, the radiation pattern would look like in free space. Now, uh, where we are right now, um, if we went into the frequencies areas, I can put here that this we're gonna place the antenna above real ground. So I go back to, to the geometry, um, and I can see the Z, which is this distance here, is at zero. So what I could do is I could go and change all of these to a specific number, let's say 10, so it would be 10 meters. If I wanted to then run the antenna at 15 meters to see what that would, um, to, to what result differences there would be between 10 and 15 meters, I would have to go to all of those Z's again and change them from 10 to 15. So if I go into symbols and I enter, for example, H for height equals 10, and we know the measurement is set to, um, to meters, I'll put above uh, or in here um, a note. So when I refer back to that, I know what that's referring to. And now I can change each of these to H. And I'll do that again in this column. And then save that. So let's see what uh, occurs now. Now you can see in the 3D plot, things have changed because we've got a representation of the ground underneath the antenna. And we can see the antenna visibly above ground. If I change to the multicolor plot, I can now see the difference and the change that ground gain has applied to the antenna. The difference is, rather than me now having to change all of these to 15 meters, I can just go back to this symbols area, change that to five and press save. I can now run again. And see the difference that that extra height has made and you can see that there's a little bit more pattern breakup. Pattern breakup and the, the separation of lobes we'll talk about in a, a, a later um, a later version of the, the tutorials. But basically um, this is an introduction, a very simple introduction to symbols. Because if from a geometry perspective I was to change each of these boom positions here 314 millimeters, 866, and so on, to a symbol, I could easily change the positions of those uh, just through an alteration to these symbols. Likewise, with these, uh, the element sizes, where this is minus 1.483 and plus 1.483, if I had RE as a symbol here, uh, say 1.483 and then 
I was to change this to minus RE and this one to just RE and then saved that. Sorry, I need to save that. When I run that, you would still see the same antenna. Um, but of course, if I wanted to change this, the, the length of this, rather than having to go in and edit each side, I can now just change this to zero and the size of the reflector will have been reduced by six millimeters and that will have an effect on the, um, the result of the pattern. So when we check the pattern now, you can see that we've lost a little bit of front to back because of the changes that I made to the reflector. So in essence with these if all of these are changed so that they're now all represented by symbols we're now in a position to use the optimizer which is built into Fornect 2 and it's the the symbols which were an important part of that setup and use of the optimizer and allowing the, the software itself to be guided to the parameters that you want to see is a very important step towards low noise Yagis. So we're at 20 minutes now, so it wasn't quite as short as I was hoping it would be. But we'll go more into the optimizer settings in the next, um, in the next session. Thanks for watching and please subscribe. All the best for now.